Because we were closed during all of that, um, we had no, no show last month. And so a big story happened last month, and we couldn't tell you about it. So David, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us about it now? Yeah, um, well, the Event Horizon Telescope that I was very, very excited to, it was, in fact, it was one of the things that we did and are looking forward that they would release an image of a black hole this year. And in fact, they did. They used it. What was that? Yes, yeah. you're a prize. Come prize winner. Um, so they used a telescope the size of the Earth. They did it by taking all these individual dishes and they measured it in the millimeter wavelength and they combined the light later. And they got an image of the black hole. Of course, this is what I think of when I wanted to see the event horizon of a black hole was the old Disney movie, of course, and that's the song we played. Some of you might have updated it a little bit and thought, well, this black hole from Interstellar. <laughs> Now this one's actually pretty realistic. It has a lot of the effects we would expect to see, including a crying Michael McConaughey. Um, the, the galaxy we looked for the black hole in um, is actually in this image as part of our big picture. You can go look in our depths of space and see it. It's that one, M87. If you zoom in on it, you see this. And if you zoom in even more, you see this weird jet of material coming from the center. And that's an indication there's a super massive black hole down in there gobbling up some material and some of it gets flung back out as that jet. So it was a great candidate for um, this telescope to add together all the data. Now, the key is you have to take the measurements at exactly the same time. You had to encode it very, very, very fast at an extremely high rate of speed. And that's why we couldn't do this in the past. Computers weren't fast enough. And even when they did this, they generated this much data. All of those are hard drives. It was petabytes of data. And it all had to be combined. Um, and you have to combine it at the right times. And you take pairs of telescopes and combine them that way. And you make an image. And here's a little diagram showing it. So if you take a telescope that's in Spain and combine it with the Chile telescopes, and as you add in more and more telescopes, the picture gets better and better as you're adding in more of those pairs of telescopes until finally you have something that looks, well, a little bit like a black hole there, perhaps. Um, Laura had a great explanation of what's really going on here using music as an example. So as you notice in that map on the left, the distances change because what's important is that the distances between the different telescopes are different when you're using lots of different telescopes. So they map out different, and for the lack of uh, just stay with me for a moment, different frequencies, different spatial frequencies. In other words, things that are resonant with these different lengths of the base, base lines that are measured. So there is the analogy with music. If you only listened to one, uh, one note at a time of a piece, and then added more notes, the piece would fill in. And it's exactly the same as this image with the black hole. So here is an example. And tell me, raise your hand when you recognize what song is being played. <laughs> so the more that fills in, it actually gets a little weirder at first, but more of it fills in until you get the whole song. Well, almost. There we go. So if you have every frequency, every note, you hear it. But if you can only play some of it, you still can recognize it. And that is what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So same thing's happening here as you add it. Yeah, it's a good example. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. So as you add in the pairs of telescopes, um, and you have to do all this after the afterwards, um, there are arrays that do this sort of thing, it's called interferometry, where they do it live, where the path lengths are the same, the light is actively combined at the detector. Here it was all recorded and done after the, effect, after the fact. Don't have time tonight to go into the details of how that all works, but this is the image, the best image they came up with. Um, several different teams came up with the, the image on their own. They compared those. They looked at how it changed in time. They did all sorts of analysis, and they were very, very confident this is actually a real image. Of course, the day it was released, the internet blew up. <laughs> um, it was all over everywhere. I don't know if you all experienced that, but Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Um, some, some thought it looked a little like a cat's eye, and it did. Um, for internet, or I guess national, <laughs> national Donut Day today, I had to put this one in here. Somebody thought it looked like a donut, Homer eating it. Um, others thought, well, if we just put on some glasses, <laughs> we'd, we'd see Sauron's eye there, and they wanted to know why it was so blurry. And a lot of folks expected to see something more like this, maybe. This is an artist's interpretation and an artist's 
imagination of what we might be seeing. But this resolution is, is ridiculously high. Of course, we got something like this. And you think, well, gee, couldn't they do a little bit better than that? Well, remember, what we're seeing isn't much bigger than our own solar system. This is from XKCD, the comic. It's one of my favorite ones on the internet. And you can see there, that's Pluto's orbit. We've flown a spacecraft past Pluto. In fact, that's how far out Voyager is compared to the sun. You can see it right on the screen there. So this black hole is, you know, 770 times, well, this, this ring of bright material is 700, uh, oh, a little over 700 times larger than the, Earth's, the distance between the Earth and the sun. So you're seeing something that's, you know, uh, many hundred times bigger than Earth-Sun distance, but not a whole lot bigger than our solar system. So how does that compare? Well, it would be as though you're looking at, okay, not New York City from LA, not Central Park, not at a guy reading the paper, not at the paper, but the period at the end of the sentence. <laughs> from LA to New York, that's how, how small that black hole was. So if you're complaining or people want to know, why was it a little blurry? <laughs> you, you, you try. <laughs> so, you know, you, you try looking at that from, from, anyway, crazy. In fact, they were saying you could read a newspaper in New York from Paris with their instrument. You'd have to scan very slowly and it'd have to be in the millimeter wavelength, but hey, maybe we could do it. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, th thank you so much. It's very exciting. In this image right here, this, this dark area in the middle is actually about 2.6 times larger than the event horizon itself. The event horizon is down in there. But the, the dark area is larger because your, your line of sight, a light beam that, let's say we're shooting it backwards from our eyes and out our telescope towards the black hole, if it intersects anywhere in this region, it eventually falls into the black hole. If you're in that very, very central sort of third, you go straight into the black hole. If you're above it, you loop around and eventually run into it. So I'm going to explain all the details or what are, what's in this image <laughs> next month, <laughs> next month, because it's just too much to go into, but we'll, we'll talk more about what's going on next month and why we have a little bit more time for it. But I'm going to spend not a ridiculous amount of time, but I'm going to go into some of the details. So come on back and uh, you can join us next month and hear how crazy things get around <laughs> a supermassive black hole.